Hey everybody, Angel Arts here, and welcome back to another episode of Gay Let's Play coming out on top. In our last episode, we had a very interesting dream with Alex, aka Professor Davies, and now we are returning back to Brad because we are trying to see if we can help him with his studies. Brad's a really interesting case because I really feel like he's just not giving himself the credit that he deserves. I think that he feels like he has to rely on someone to do his schoolwork for him because he feels like he's not smart enough or he's not capable of getting the work done. And as a person who is a tutor, part of your job is to try to help motivate and try to help people realize their potential and let them know that they can do it. It's just so sad when people, especially people who are into athletics, into sports, when they feel like, you know, I play sports because that's what I'm good at. And that's what I, that's the only thing I can be good at. I'm not good at school. I'm not smart enough to get A's unless somebody's writing papers for me. And I just think that's really sad. And I'm just hoping that if Mark can try to help, I think Mark feels like the way that he truly can help Brad is if he shows him that he's worth more than that, that he he can do it and that he is capable and he doesn't have to just be a one-trick pony. He doesn't have to just be, you know, a football, Brad the football player. He can be Brad, he can be other things as well. And um, that's at least what I'm going to try to do through Mark. Because um, I feel like Brad he has a good heart and I think that he just needs to realize he just needs to realize his potential and and have more have, have, be more um, confident in himself when it comes to schoolwork. Look you're already two weeks behind in the reading assignments when I see you next week I want you sober alert and caught up with all the reading otherwise I'm done. Well as long as I'm getting paid you got yourself a deal. Come on don't you even want to give it a shot? Prove to yourself that you can do it. Yeah exactly! Prove yourself that you can do it no. Brad, why not? I don't get it. I'm gonna have to read books and stuff. Brad, how awful. Then, like, write about them. Come on, Brad. Can you believe this place? Exactly, man. Who needs that hanging over his head? Seriously, I'd rather stand in, li stand in for the D-Lions tackling dummy. Well, too bad. Come on, it won't be that bad. What about the days when you were a good student? Ah, oh, my brother must have told you about that, huh? Bo thinks he knows me. He really doesn't. I can't write worth anything, man. Okay, so it's been a while, but most things aren't good. But most things aren't good on first draft. We'll make it better on the revisions. Brad looks doubtful. A knock on the door interrupts your conversation. It's open. A girl pokes her head in, completely oblivious to you. You're assaulted by the smell of cotton candy, strawberries, and bubblegum. Brad, the rager's gonna be on at 10, okay? I'd be broken up if you miss it, especially after what you pulled at your birthday bash. Uh, you mean how polished? How I polished off an entire cake on my own, right? That was some good cake. Oh, Brad, did you forget I can suck a hot dog through a straw? Maybe you could use a refresher. <clears throat> I didn't see you were there. Are you the new kicker? New kicker? Yeah, you know, ever since Roman put the last one in the hospital. Three cracked ribs. Don't ever play slaps with Roman. How do you break somebody's ribs playing slaps? Roman's not exactly a gracious loser. But no, I'm not the new kicker. I'm here to tutor Brad. What? Really? Daisy shoots a look at Brad. He shrugs. Don't look at me. Bo hired him. What? All tutoring assignments for the team go through me. See, I usually tutor the boys myself, or assign them to other girls if I'm booked. Guess I slipped through the cracks then. You make a whooshing noise with a little swipe of your hand. <laughs> I'll have to chat. I'll have to chat with Bo. I'll have to have a chat with Bo. Well, you know, maybe Brad's just fine with me as his tutor. Oh, really? Well, I can write his papers and provide fun little perks. She bats her eyes at Brad, running her tongue along her top lip. Oh my gosh. What do you have to offer? Brad looks interested in what you have to say. I can provide perks as well. Lift your lips seductively. Write his papers? Yeah, I don't want... I don't want... I don't think... I think this is bad, because I don't want... 
do you know how horrible would it be to a lot of people if there was even a hint it shouldn't be that way but we're not in we're not quite there yet a lot of people who are in like sports especially like football if there was any suspicion that they were gay many guys wouldn't want they wouldn't feel comfortable with that and i'm not gonna make any i'm just not gonna make any like notions to 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 even hint at Brad's, you know, possible gay sexual like sexuality. Write his papers, perks. You, madam, are a disgrace to tutors everywhere, to the very profession, and most of all to yourself. Frankly, I'm appalled. The administration will be hearing of your misdeeds, I promise you that. Oh my gosh, that's so lame. I can provide him with what's the purpose of this entire university in the first place, an education. <laughs> I'm leaving, I'm not battling with you to be somebody's... I'm leaving, I'm not battling with you to be somebody's tutor. This is not... No, not this, not this, not this. I don't really... None, none of these... None of these responses really jump out at me. This one... I don't want to make people think that Brad is gay if he doesn't want people to think he is, if he is. I'm not gonna do this. This is kind of what I want to say, but it just starts, sounds too smart alecky. This makes me sound like a goody two-shoes, but I think Mark is the only one. I think Mark is. I can provide him what's the purpose of this entire university in the first place, an education. You... Are you for real? Heck yeah, honey. Are those boobies real? You know, it might sound corny, but you guys are here for a reason. Why not take advantage of it? Brad, listen to me. Even if you make pro, you don't know how long your career will last. Wouldn't it make sense to have a backup plan? Are you listening to this guy, Brad? Jesus H. Daisy snorts with laughter. Brad remains silent, looking uncomfortable. Brad? Well, I don't know. You might have a point. Hallelujah, the man I real through the bait, reeling him in, education-wise at least. Wait, no, seriously? I mean, maybe I could try the whole schoolwork thing for a little while. Really? I'm like surprised, I'm shocked too. I was like, did you really just say that? Don't get too excited, I said maybe. Well, let's see how it goes. Daisy turns to leave. She pauses briefly, flashing the most ungenuine of smiles. I'm so glad we have this option, because I'm sure you could have probably gone through the path of just, you know, let's just, sure, I'll do your papers, and then, you know, maybe you can do a little something, something for me on the side. But I kind of like that this is what we're doing with Brad instead. And even if things don't work out, I feel like we could have a good friendship, and at least I feel like I'm actually helping somebody, helping him do something. You know, if it flourishes into something else, great. If it doesn't, Brad doesn't seem like such a bad guy. When you change your mind, you know where to find me. She stops to blow Brad a kiss. What about me? She shoots you a dirty look as she slams the door. Phew. So you're gonna give this a shot. Like I said, we'll see. You won't regret this. Brad sighs as he stares at the back of the books on his desk. I already am. You and Brad sit down to go over his syllabus and brainstorm essay topics. Brad sighs, fidgets, and complains. You tutor him for two hours, not entirely sure if anything you said made an impression. You make $60 this session. You now have a total of $160. Cool. School keeps you busy for the rest of the week. Friday. After a long day of classes, you rifle through your closet, hunting for something to wear for the fundraising dinner. Whoa, you're gonna go meet this Phil's dad already? Sounds serious. It's not like that, Ian. I'm going, I'm not going for Phil, I'm going for Penny. I'm just, I just met him. I'm sure Phil regards me as a civilian scum. Anyway, the next time Penny tries to set me up with one of her cousins, do me a favor and punch me in the scrotum. Will do. Penny's got the intuition of a potato, dude. Yeah, I should know this by now. Anyway, the more I think about tonight, the more I'm feeling sick. I swear I'm developing an ulcer. Not only is Phil going to be there, I'm going to be rubbing elbows with a bunch of bigwigs, his heavily decorated marine father and wealthy tech tycoons. You're looking at this the wrong way, dude. The rich and powerful are just like you and me. Yes, I hear some of them have emotions. Seriously, they're, up, they're super easy to charm. You want some advice? They love hearing about how they are more important things than being rich. Quite quote philosophy and nuggets of ancient wisdom. Like what? Something from Aesop's fables? 
Nah, everybody knows those stories. The tortoise and the hare, the old man in the glory hole. Ian? What kid doesn't know those by heart? Ian? You got quite more esoteric stuff. Like, the emperor is rich, but he cannot buy one extra year. Are you writing this down? I'll wait for you to grab a pen. Ian, I love you. Oh, of all the good, of all the male characters so far, I think I definitely love Ian the best, hands down. He's so he's so great. Oh, he's so charming. No need. It's in the permanent memory bank with all the other tips you've given me over the years. Want another tip? Badminton, dude. Badminton? I swore you just said badminton. Badminton's a good fat cat hobby because it's eccentric, but non-threatening. I'm not entirely, entirely sure you're getting all where you're getting all this advice. A silent film from the 1920s? A cartoon from the 50s, actually. You'd be surprised by the amount of biting social commentary cloaked in entertainment made for children. Well, do you have a monocle? Maybe I sense that's what's coming next. Monocle? Ha! Huh, what a great idea! I totally don't have a monocle, but I do have something else you could use. Ian dashes out of your room in excitement. You shake your head as you finish changing. After a minute, he reappears with a, bla reappears with a black object which he plants firmly on top of your head. The billionaires will love this. <laughs> I see you've finally gone insane. It's quirky, it's hip, it shows your ironic sense of humor. Something smells smoky. Is this a prop from one of your catastrophic magic shows? Oh, he does magic, Ian? That's, I actually find that kind of cool. I'm not gonna lie. I totally did not mean to set that frat's curtains on fire. I mean, it's their own fault for picking something flammable. I think they sent us a bill for the scorched pool table. What's important is I salvage the style and accessory from the flames. You can pop it open and close too. And use it like a frisbee. <laughs> the pop-up feature does have class written all over it. Dude, you have class written all over. You. You have class written all over you. You're gonna impress them out there, Mark. You'll see. I still feel like I'm going to throw up. No worries. I've got these antacid tablets in the bathroom for when I scarf too many pastries at work. It'll calm you down, dude. It's next to my, er, your toothbrush. Ian, are you using my toothbrush? You got tonight covered, dude. You're gonna charm their expensive made in Switzerland rich people socks off. You stare at yourself in the mirror as you swallow a few antacid tablets. Keep the hat on for now. Ian, I'm, I don't want to hurt Ian's feelings. Funnily enough, the hat does feel comforting. <laughs> whatever. If people judge me, whatever. The hotel parked parking lot is crowded with luxury cars. You pass through a lobby filled with marble surfaces and thick spotless carpets. You and Penny walk through a set of double doors decorated with blue and white streamers. Wow. The room is crowded with men in suits and beautiful women in evening dresses and fancy jewelry. The sounds of hushed voices, soft piano music, and clinking glasses fill the air. Weird. You're feeling lightheaded. And more than a little woozy. By the way, you can totally take that off now. You know likey? A man who looks like an older version of Phil, handsome and impeccably dressed, walks towards the two of you. He's flanked by a 40-something in a suit, who you assume is a staffer. Penny, glad you could join us. Phil's father glances at your hat, then you. He introduces himself. Donald Healy. Mark Matthews, a pleasure. You tip your hat. <laughs> That's quite a hat you've got there. Yeah, yes it does, and I'm rocking it. I am rocking it confidently, no matter how many people stare. Senator Healy eyes his companion uneasily. Mr. Matthews, would you like me to check your very stylish hat into the coat room for you? No thanks. Penny gives you a little kick. Maybe you should take that off now, Mark. Take what off? Are you okay? I feel pretty good. I feel really good, in fact. Did I have a little too much to drink? Penny looks at her uncle and the staffer. My friend doesn't seem to be feeling well. I think he just needs a little water. If you'll please excuse us. Hey, Penny, you're the one who begged me to come here, all right? So if you come here, I'm gonna have some fun. The bar's over there. Please enjoy yourselves. Since the senator and his staffer gave you a look of concern before they stroll away. Did you have a drink before we came here? No, my stomach was upset, so I told so Ian told me to grab a couple of his cool looking antacid tablets. Um, you know Ian's got a bunch of different pills and stuff that he stores in the medicine cabinet, right? For his zoology class? Oh gosh. What you mean for his zoology class? 
Animal tranquilizers. Oh, Ian. Mark, stay right here. I'm not gonna- I'm gonna get you some water for the bar. From the bar. Don't move. I'll be back with- Oh my god. <gasps> I think that's the developer of shh, sipping a martini. Penny bolts off. You stand near a table, steadying yourself with the back of the chair. Oh boy. Hey, Philbert. It's Phil. Let me take that hat for you. It's not my hat. I borrowed it. If you don't give me that hat, I'm gonna throw you out. It's just a hat. Phil, you're no fun. You're no fun, Phil. I can't believe you have the nerve to show up here like this is an important fundraiser. It's a conversation piece. Thank you, Mark. You're not, you are not a magician. And you've obviously been smoking something. Now, here's the young man I've been looking for. You turn to see an older couple standing behind you. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Walker. Phil, your father mentioned you just survived boot camp. Your father's so proud, Phil, especially since you're heading into reconnaissance. Well, I'm not there yet. I still have to pass my quals and train. It's a challenge just to get in. I'm sure you'll do just fine. You're one of the most motivated and hardworking men we know. As if your father could produce anything less, we most certainly need young men like you in the world. You should see the miscreants our daughter brings home. It's my opinion she shouldn't be dating until she's at least 37. And just who is your friend here, Phil? I spotted him walking around earlier. You can't miss that hat. I'm so glad I kept Ian's hat. Oh, this is Mark Matthews. The fourth. <laughs> Mark, you should be on Ian's tranquilizers more often. A friend of my cousin's. Are you also a recruit? A recruit? Not at all. I, I dabble, I recreate, I have my s silly little hobbies. Oh, what sort of silly little hobbies? Badminton, racquetball, swimming. Badminton, racquetball, swimming. Um, I'm gonna go with Ian. Badminton? Badminton, how fascinating. Yes, I wouldn't call myself a pro, but the home in Aspen came equipped with a court. So I picked it up, and allow me to confess, it felt so right the first time I held a shuttle- Shuttlecock? I don't even know what that is. Okay. I'm so going with- I mean, I'm just going with it. I'm just- I, It's too late, I'm just going with it. A tense pause, suddenly Mrs. Walker lets out a delighted whoop. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. and Mrs. Walker, but I was just showing Mark where he'd be seated tonight. Phil, relax, son. Your friend here is the most interesting person we've met in such a long time. We always end up at these political fundraisers, fundraisers and frankly, no offense to Donald, but the crowd is always so dull. So very, very dull. Your friend is a breath of fresh air. Phil, your buddy seems like he's got personality, insight, a unique perspective on things. Isn't that right, Matthews? Wealthy as I am, I like to stay in touch with the common people. The Emperor is rich, but he cannot buy one extra year. Wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few wants. That's really... Oh, Mark, that's very philosophical. Wow, very intuitive. The Emperor is rich, but he cannot buy one extra year. <laughs> this is all... <laughs> this is all what Ian is telling me to say. Mr. Walker slaps you on the back. <laughs> I love this guy! Woo! I'm hitting it off with the rich people! Penny's gonna be so jealous. I have an idea. Let's introduce you boys to Violet. Mrs. Walker enthusiastically waves over a young woman looking disdainfully at a tray of hors d'oeuvres. That bartender had to make my mojito five times in a row. I just told him to forget him the fifth try. You know how waiting over three minutes just makes you not want something anymore? Never mind that, Violet. This is Phil Healy and Mark Matthews, the four. These are the types of young men we want you to be meeting. Violet glares at Phil. I hear you're some kind of soldier. Marine. How come you're not wearing your dress blues? Those things are hot. We're not allowed to wear them for political functions. How many people have you killed? My gosh, Violet. None. I just got out of boot camp. You know, service members love hearing that question. You're nice. <laughs> what? What kind of conversation is this? Hardly. She glances at you. 
You're wearing a top hat. Why, yes. Yes, I am. Can I have it? You know, Violet, every increased possession loads us with new wariness. Listen to this fellow. That's what I'm talking about. Who is this clown? You hear someone panting behind you. Mark, I'm so sorry. That took me forever. This spoiled... The spoiled punk at the bar was taking forever to order a mojito. Oh! Penny looks around and sees the walker staring at her. Hello! Okay, everyone. Looks like dinner's about to be served. Mr. and Mrs. Walker, Violet, if you allow me to show you to your table. Penny hands you your glass of water. So the shh lady won't even talk to me. I told her I was developing an app and she just rolled her eyes. I'd like to roll her eyes straight out of her head with a spoon. Well, I'll have the last laugh when I release Brofinder. Anyway, how are you feeling, Mark? Not entirely well. This hat feels like it's coming to life and squeezing my brains out for dinner. Let's go eat something. That should help. Our table's over there. Huh. For some reason, we're sitting behind the potted plant and the velvet ropes. Before you can move, you feel a hand on your shoulder. Hi, I'm Patrick. We met earlier. I remember. You tried to check my hat. You touched the edge of your hat protectively. <laughs> yes, and I'm sorry. Just want you to know the walkers love you. You did a fine job getting them relaxed and in good spirits. They can be an extremely generous family. We're quite appreciative. He walks off. Huh. Maybe I should have had you talk to the shh lady. Yes, maybe you should have, Penny. Dinner turns out to be delicious. Unfortunately, you feel like throwing everything up, throwing everything up due to the weird pills you took. You notice yourself nodding off as Phil's father makes a speech. When you wake up, Phil is glaring at you. So, Ian's pills, he didn't specify his pills, that sort of put a damper on things, but his hat was a hit, so it all balances out. Penny walks you back to the car. Oh, and his lines. His lines that he told me to say, like, I used them and I was a riot, so everything goes up positive for Ian. Penny walks you back to the car. You put your arm around her to keep from falling. You return in early to pass out for nine hours. At some point, you dream about running through a meadow pregnant with twin cults. Thanks a lot, Ian. Rise and shine. Ah, it's always great to wake up to your face, Ian. <laughs> Didn't I tell you to knock, Ian? And seriously, two Saturday mornings in a row? Come on, Mark, no slacking off. You're just getting started. Grab your stuff and get a move on, soldier. Hold on a sec, you're not even coming with me? No, I'm just trying to help you out here. I gotta work this morning. Why, that's not your usual shift. Well, well, the manager accused me of flirting with a customer who happened to be his 15-year-old daughter. Belly Tats sure had a couple of years. For sure had a couple of years. Now I gotta work Saturday now I gotta work Saturday mornings for for God knows how long. I think I've been framed. Oh, I won't be able to go to the gym with Ian on Saturdays. Oh, I like that. Regardless, I am committed to making sure you go to the gym. Go get your bags. Not gonna happen, I got other things to do. Fine, fine, I was gonna go anyway. Yeah, might as well go. Continue my routine. I'm like a routine kind of person. You grab your things and walk over to the gym, alone. I wanted to go with Ian. So what should you do today? You're for here for a purpose, soldier. Hit the ball. Maybe see if anybody's up for a game of racquetball. No, because Alex might be there. Hit the treadmill again. Again? I only went to the pool once. Um, we only went to the pool last time. Let's hit the treadmill this time. Eh, he really likes the pool, though. I mean, the pool the pool is good because I think it works more muscles than just your... I think the pool does more for you than just the treadmill. So you're here for a purpose, soldier. Hit the pool. You change in your trunks and dive in. Ah, the water feels a little cold at first, but gradually feels amazing as you acclimate to the temperature. You begin your laps. A sense of peace floods your mind and body as you get lost in the motions of swimming and breathing. And I figured this probably would help him clear his mind a little bit more. Swimming would. You wish the rest of your life could be this simple. After about an hour, you change back into your gym clothes, enjoying a blissful post-workout buzz. You leave the pool area, passing by the racquetball courts. You don't see anyone of interest. You leave the gym feeling refreshed. 
Phew, you finally got some downtime this weekend. In terms of your studies, you're kicking butt. Your relationship with Penny is great these days. You feel grateful for her friendship. You and Ian are on friendly terms. And finally, you've got $160 in savings. How will you spend your extra time? Tutor at the Student Learning Center for cash. Get some extra studying. Invite Ian and Penny to the beach to fly your new kite? Penis kite in celebration of To Hell with the Children Day? I haven't had, see, now that I, see, now that I have gotten my studies done, I've got my work, now I can play hard. I work hard and play hard too, that's important. Um, and since I wasn't able to hang out with Ian, you know, this morning for the gym, it'd be nice to hang out with him, you know, at the beach. I would be okay with hanging out with Ian and Penny at the beach. $35? Yeah. Let's do it. You enjoy the sun, sand, and frivolity as hundreds of people fly their mature theme kites at the beach. The aborted fetus kite seems to be getting the most attention, but you've received several compliments on your flying member. Replete the white stream with replete with white streamers and stunt stunt handles that allow you to defy to deftly guide the kite through a series of daring and exhilarating maneuvers. Everything is going well until Ian, flying the kite at lower and lower altitudes, accidentally crashes it hard into Penny's butt. Surprise, anal! He yells as everyone in your vicinity stops what they're doing and politely applauds. Oh, I love Ian so much! Oh, it's so great. Your relationship has improved with both roommates. Cool! Now that I've studied, yes. Looks like a busy week ahead. You've got an oral presentation coming up. Um... Okay, I think this is probably a good place for us to stop. So I'll continue on with the week in the next video. Thanks, guys, for watching. And until next time, love yourselves and love each other.